all right guys and this is exactly how you start a tutorial with a whole lot of blood right <laughs> anyway before halloween wraps up guys i decided that i want to put a tutorial together for you i'll be showing you how to create this machete oh wait for it i need to i mean i need to disable my depth of field all right but anyway uh this is in keyshot in case you guys are wondering but we are going to be creating this entire machete from start to finish within Fusion 360 and then we're going to bring it over to Keyshot. I'm going to be showing you the power of labels and how we can use labels to actually texture an, ob uh, an object like this without having to do any UV mapping uh, and I'll show you how you can add some depth uh, to some 3D labels uh, like you can see that blood. Um, there's just this technique with a bump and yeah it's pretty cool <laughs> but anyway I'm going to be showing you guys how to do this uh, and we're just going to have some fun. I thought it's Halloween and um, I was watching Friday the 13th again and I was just inspired by Jason Voorhees and all the murder that he was committing and that sounds really crazy <laughs> but I just decided that I wanted to create this machete and show you guys the entire process and how I would even go about texturing this so it's gonna be fun I hope you guys are ready there's gonna be a lot of uh, cool techniques that I'm, that I'm gonna be showing you in Fusion 360 and Keyshot so without further ado guys Let's get started and happy Halloween. Right, so I'm going to start off by inserting an attached canvas onto the following plane. So I'm just going to go ahead, find that image of the GTA 5 uh, machete. We're basically going to be uh, designing our machete based off this concept. And then you can see I'm just increasing the size. I think I go for 8 millimeters. And then you'll see that I'm also going to uh, make sure that display through is checked and I'm going to adjust the canvas opacity to 60. Uh, just so I can see my sketch and the canvas image as well. And then um, you can see I'm going and I'm going to edit canvas and I'm just going to reposition the canvas image. Uh, make sure that um, that handle region is actually closer to the origin point. So you'll see that that middle bolt, I'm actually going to line up that middle bolt with the origin point. Um, and this is just to make sure everything's in order and organized so that we can actually get started and start creating this machete all right all right so i'm going to start off with the spline and the reason that i'm using the spline is because the spline basically gives me uh, these nice curves that are created uh, whenever i'm placing points and you can see i'm just basically tracing uh, the overall shape uh, of this handle but I'm making sure that by the corners it's not too sharp because um, I noticed earlier that uh, while I was trying to draw out the shape if I made the corners a little bit too sharp I was having a really hard time trying to apply a chamfer uh, to the edges so I'm just making sure that there's uh, enough roundness uh, to all of the corners and then again uh, the spline tool really comes in handy especially for shapes like this for handles because like I said, it gives you some really nice curves. And then you can see, I'm just going to go back, uh, adjust some of those uh, points that were created with the spline uh, until I get a handle uh, that, I am personally, that I'm personally uh, comfortable with and uh, that I find aesthetically pleasing. So I'm basically using the canvas as a guideline, uh, but not copying it exactly. Now you can see I went to extrude, I put it on symmetric so that we extrude on both sides at the same time, uh, just extruding the width. And now you can see I'm going back, applying a chamfer to those edges now. And uh, I've got my chamfer type on distance and angle. And that's basically, as you can see over there, I'm able to adjust the angle of the chamfer. So this is actually a really cool uh, technique that I discovered in Fusion, uh, Fusion 360 a while back. Uh, just for uh, you know it just gives you a little bit more control over the the angle of your your chamfers and now i'm just going back uh, applying a fillet to this edge as well because i personally believe that uh, nothing really has super sharp edges especially something like a handle uh, i'm just trying to add more of an ergonomic or just something that looks also a little bit more aesthetically pleasing so i'm just rounding off uh, some of these uh, harder corners and now we're going to start off with the zandal shape but I'm actually going to go back later on and I'm going to be showing you how we're going to be adjusting this 
I add in more uh, shape and curve to it to make it look uh, a lot more aesthetically pleasing. So this is basically, this is just a base for now. As you can see, I'm just playing around with that fillet and trying to get something uh, that I'm happy with. And I usually switch between, you see I was changing my viewing style there, I switch between the shaded and the shaded with the lines. And that uh, when it's on shaded, it just gives me a more accurate representation of the overall design. It helps me see fillets and chamfers a lot better and a lot clearer as well. So you can see over here I noticed that I wasn't happy with the overall shape of the handle. So I just control Z, went back, went back to the sketch and I'm just adjusting uh, some of those points again until I get something that I'm happy with. So Fusion 360 is really powerful in terms of uh, doing amendments. Uh, you've got the timeline at the bottom which allows you to go way back in time and make changes to your design. Or you can just control Z. Or you can, like I said, the timelines will allow you to make changes uh, to your designs and it really comes in handy and it can save you a lot of headaches. So now I actually decided that I'm going to make the handle um, a lot closer to the actual design of the GTA 5 machete. I have no idea why I didn't do this at first. But anyway, repeating the same process, I put it on symmetric, it's on new body, um, using the extrude and getting it to uh, 2 millimeters, or what? 2.5 millimeters. Click on OK. Now I'm going to repeat the same process, applying the chamfer first, which is on distance and angle. Like I said, that's going to allow me to control the angle of my chamfer, which really comes in handy. And then applying a fillet uh, to this edge as well, just to round it off a little bit. <coughs> now obviously, you go into encounter limitations with Fusion 360. Uh, you'll see that there's only certain values or amounts that you can fill it to. And I think that just adds um, a little bit more believability to the, the fillets that you start applying to your designs. Uh, I think those limitations actually uh, make sense within this program. So again, just some trial and error, applying that fillet, uh, trying to find a value that actually works. And over there, I'm going to rule fillet. So rule fillet, uh, basically, with a rule fillet, I don't have to select an edge. I just select a face, and rule fillet will apply a fillet to that entire face that's selected. So that can also really come in handy and save you a little bit of time instead of selecting a bunch of um, edges. You can just select a face and fillet the face. Now again, switching between shaded and shaded with lines. I feel like personally this is a good habit that I've developed as it allows me to just see things from uh, a different a different view, if I'll call it that. And again, you can see I applied another fillet on that other edge of the back. I really love my fillets, uh, but especially for something like a handle, you want certain parts of it to be hard and you want it to be soft as well. Uh, so you're just basically uh, blending these shapes together to create something that's uh, aesthetically pleasing to look at. Now over here, I'm drawing a line down the center and I'm going to use split body. And the reason for doing this is because uh, you'll see I'm hiding the part on the left because I've already done all the work on the right. So all I have to do is now I'm going to mirror and I'm going to mirror this part to the other side. So again, you're trying to work smart here instead of having to do that same process on the other side again. You just cut it down the center and then you mirror that side over to the other side. And now just analyzing the handle making sure I'm happy with everything, selecting that center line because this isn't, these are two separate bodies. Uh, but I decided that I wanted a, there must be some kind of a visible separation down the center. Uh, I decided I want to do that earlier on. So just selecting that line, applying a fillet on that center, doing the same for the other side. And you'll see it creates this nice uh, separation line, which is going to be an indicator for me uh, later on once we start further adjusting it. Right, so it's time to create the machete, 
And this time I'm actually going to combine my workflow. I'm going to be using splines and I'm going to be using lines. So you can see I'm starting off with the spline over here and I'm making sure that uh, that first point is lined up with my handle. That's really important, guys. Um, you can see with the actual concept, it's also lined up with the handle. But again, the spline just gives me a lot of freedom uh, with creating certain shapes like this. And uh, using the spline is just something you have to get used to. So you can see over there, I decided that I wanted to stop with the spline and use the line tool instead so that I could get a perfectly straight line. And you can see that I'm actually continuing. Uh, you can see there's a separation here. We've got the black region and then that uh, metallic blade region at the bottom. And you'll see exactly why I'm doing this in a moment. So I decided that I'm going to finish my sketch off by the black region. And you can see again, just switching between spline and the line tool. I think over here, I'm going to switch back to the spline again, just to get some of those nice curves. There we go. So just combining these two together helps you uh, basically uh, come up with some really complex and interesting shapes. So here at the bottom, I decided that I'm rather going to use the line tool and fillet the corners instead of, uh, you know, just using the spline over there because I thought that the fillet would just be a little bit more accurate for the type of shape I was going for. Now you can see that I'm actually ending the blade region over there, but I'm going to be showing you later on how I extend the blade uh, into the handle as well using some pretty neat uh, techniques. You can see over there, applied the fillet. And over here, I could see uh, I wasn't really happy with this line. I didn't really want it to be completely bent like that. Uh, so again, just going back and adjusting uh, some of the points. Trying to straighten it up a little bit. just getting something that I'm happy with. And there we go, guys. Combination of splines and lines to get the shape of our machete. And we cut it off by the black region. So now I can go ahead, extrude this out. I'm going to put it the direction on uh, symmetric as well. Make sure it's a new body. So I'm going for 0 0.5 millimeters for my body. Selecting that body we just drew out as the plane we're going to sketch on. And now here at the bottom is where our silver, um, that's, you saw the, our silver, the metallic piece is going to be over there. But before we get there, I'm actually drawing a line over here because I want to separate these two pieces. So you'll see why I'm doing this. And I'm making sure this line uh, lines up with the body that you see over there and I'm going to go to modify split body and I'm going to split this into two pieces now so I've got my line and there we go it's officially in two pieces so if I go back to uh, shaded with edges only now you can see those are two pieces and it's really important that I do this for the next part because now we're going to use a really really powerful feature called draft with Infusion 360 so I'm going to modify draft and you can see I'm selecting that these two faces. And now if I adjust the angle, it just automatically gives me this beautiful uh, blade shape. Just by selecting those two uh, faces and then adjusting the angle, uh, we can get this really nice sharp uh, blade design for our machete. So it was really that simple, guys. That's all I did to get that sharp blade. I use the draft feature within Fusion 360, which is really, really powerful. And it's something that uh, I didn't use too much. Now you can see, I'm just again adjusting those values, lining it up with that other piece that we separated so that everything just blends together uh, perfectly. And now you can see we've got that nice sharp blade and it's starting to come together now. Okay, 
So you can see it's selecting a bottom plane and uh, basically what I'm going to be doing here is uh, I'm basically going to be cutting uh, this blade at an angle so that it, it kind of like tapers uh, towards the back uh, of the blade. So you can see I just selected that bottom plane and just drawing out this line that I'm sketching on. Making sure that I join these two together so that the sketch is closed and that it's complete. And that's an indication. Now I want to make sure that I hide the handle bodies because if I don't do that and I complete this cut operation, it's going to cut into the handles as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, you want to hide those bodies before you perform certain operations like this. So there we go. I created like a, a taper. So it's a lot more thicker towards the front. And um, it just tapers in, as you can see over there. All right, guys. So you can see we've only got one part of the blade, right? So we want to make sure that we actually mirror this to the other side to complete the shape. So... You'll see I'll be doing that in a moment. I'm selecting the body, going to create, going to mirror, selecting the other side of that blade as the mirror plane, and you'll see that it creates a perfect duplicate of those two together. And then I'm just combining those, joining them as one body. And now I'm scaling this non-uniformly, and that's going to allow me to just make the blade a little bit thinner. And we've got those two pieces combined together. And then I press the shortcut M for move. And I'm just making sure this is at the center using that square uh, navigation point over there so that it's not restricted to any axis. And I can just move it around freely. So there we go. We've combined those two pieces together. And now we're going to continue. All right. So again, I am going to be splitting this into two pieces. So again, I'm using split body. And referencing that line is my splitting tool. Turn on edges so I can see where my edges are. And this time I'm just applying a chamfer to the top, uh, the top edge there as well. Now obviously the bottom edge uh, is going to have a lot more of a chamfer angle than the top. Uh, but applying a chamfer to the top as well uh, is really important. Or else it just starts to look really uh, just blocky. And it starts to lack detail. So just adding these uh, these small small amounts of detail, like these little chamfers, makes a big difference, uh, especially in your final render. So just keep that in mind, guys. You can see I'm doing it to the front as well, uh, applying a chamfer value. And trying to see how far I can push that value. And you can see those lines almost meet up. And that was something that I was happy with. So we've got a nice chamfer on the top as well. And that's separated onto two, uh, two pieces. And I'm separating those two pieces because I don't want the entire chamfer uh, to go right through the, uh, the blade at the back as well. I want that back piece uh, to have its own unique chamfer value as well. Just going into render. Uh, so I can analyze you know, just uh, what's going on with the design, looking at the chamfer, looking at the fillets. Right, so I'm combining these two pieces together now. You can see the operation is on join. So there we go. So separating those two pieces, again, gives you more control over where you apply your chamfer values. Now you can see this blade over here. Like I said, I'm going to be, I'm going to be showing you how I'm actually going to be blending that blade seamlessly with the, actual, with the handle. So over here, I'm just uh, separating out the handle a little bit more to accommodate uh, the blade. And the technique that we'll be using uh, to actually blend the blade with the handle is going to be called intersect. Uh, but you guys are going to be seeing all of that. I just thought I'll mention it now. So there we go. We've got enough space for our blade. Right, so I'm selecting that plane. Uh, but before we complete the operation, I want to make sure that I'm actually... Uh, over there you can see I'm just testing the intersect out. But I want to make sure I duplicate this handle. 
because if I don't duplicate this handle, I'm going to lose the handle, right? Because the blade is basically going to take on the overall contour or shape of the handle. So you'll see what I mean in a moment. So I just duplicated the handle and I hit it as well. And now I can complete the operation. So I'll try and pull it out as far as I can and then put it on intersect. And you'll see that there we go. The blade is now taking the form and the shape of the handle. So Intersect really, really comes in handy. It's an awesome uh, feature in Fusion 360. Again, making sure I'm duplicating that handle again because I need to do the intersection process uh, one more time so that we get that bottom uh, shape as well. So again, I'm just going to extrude this down now and change my operation to Intersect. And now you can see we've perfectly got the shape of our handle with our blade uh, using intersect so really powerful feature and over there you saw that I just combined those two together so that that's one piece and now we've got our blade in the center that has taken on the contour and overall shape of our handle so intersect is really really awesome uh, for doing uh, certain operations like this now I'm just Obviously, because it's, it's really thin, I just want to make sure that I'm extruding that out, applying some kind of thickness to it as well, making sure that that's a new body. And I'm going to combine these two pieces together. So that thin piece that I had from earlier and the thick piece that I just drew out now, and we've joined that together. So now if we bring back the other handle, you can see over there, our blade has perfectly uh, fitted in with our handle. And it was really that simple. So just check in on the shaded view as well. Making sure I'm happy with everything. Alright, so I've got some pieces in my scene that I no longer need. And you see I right clicked and I went to remove. Sometimes clicking on delete can cause uh, downstream errors. So it's much better to remove them instead of deleting them. And over here I'm just renaming uh, some of my groups. Making sure everything's a little bit more organized. Hiding the handle. Because um, you'll see that I'm going to be splitting this down the middle. Uh, because uh, I think with my operation the one side somehow was a little bit uh, different than the other so I just want to make sure that it's perfect on both sides so we've done this earlier uh, you just draw a line down the center you split it in half you hide the one piece and then you just mirror that to the other side so that it's perfectly symmetrical so I needed to do that for this operation and then I'm applying a nice fillet to these edges now so I have to go with a really small value. And this is going to look really nice. Um, see, it's going to add a nice separation there by the handle. As you can see. So those chamfers and those fillets really make a difference, guys. It's just knowing where to apply them. And when you should apply them. Because you can also add too many fillets to a design. Or too many chamfers. And then it starts to be like overkill. So... It's just something you learn over time from analyzing uh, different uh, industrial designs and uh, just trying to understand uh, why they've made certain decisions to place uh, certain curves or fillets in certain locations. Now you can see I went back onto the blade over there as well and I uh, just completed the process by applying a fillet, uh, a chamfer uh, to those edges. But you can see over here these two pieces weren't joined so I had to make sure that I joined them together and uh, over here I'm just using a fillet to round off this area a little bit because you can see it's a little bit sharp over there so yeah uh, the pieces that were joined together I was referring to that back piece of the blade in case you guys missed it uh, but now it should be a lot better
again applying those chamfers and it just blends a lot better now and now I can combine the entire blade together uh, because we've completed I think most of the detailing for the blade in that back region and you can see everything just fits together really nicely and we've made some pretty good progress now with our machete right so I think for the next piece we're actually going to be adding some more curves to this uh, to our handle over here so you can see I went back in the timeline again Fusion 360's timeline is extremely powerful uh, it allows you to edit changes that you made in the beginning of the project so it can save you so much headaches it's a real time saver I wish every program had this feature but you can see over here I'm gonna be showing you how I'm adding more uh, aesthetically pleasing curves to this handle so over there you can see how I created that arch shape I just basically held down the left mouse button so I would click and while the buttons held down I would just drag it down and you'll see that an arch gets created like that now I really wish Fusion 360 uh, had an option to uh, uh, 3d studio max has these um, deformation modifiers that allows you to adjust the shapes like this so it's a little bit cumbersome to do it this way but if you're trying to go for I'd say certain curves if you want to add certain curves to your designs then uh, you're gonna have to do it this way not a big deal it gets the job done So you can see we've added some curves then I'm going to make sure that I apply a fillet uh, to this edge as well just to round it off there and make sure it blends seamlessly and then I'll be doing the same to this region as well applying a fillet you can see we've made some nice changes there you can already see we've got a comparison with the left and right and now I can go back apply the chamfer that we had earlier and just repeat that process we apply the chamfer apply the fillets to the edges again uh, but this time we've got a much more aesthetically pleasing looking handle for our machete just by simply cutting off certain areas knowing where to apply fillets um, and then just doing uh, adding some more detail so I notice here that I think I was having a little bit of trouble with the chamfer actually I think because of the curves I actually couldn't apply a chamfer here so I had to use an alternative I think I had to go ahead and you can see over there bottom right I keep getting that error so I actually I think because of the curves that were created I couldn't apply a chamfer so I went for a fillet instead now fillets can usually be applied to stuff that has a lot of curves to it I've noticed that uh, from creating quite a few objects in Fusion 360 now so you can see it completed that operation immediately there wasn't any errors and uh, it still looks fine so it's basically rounded off those edges and I, I was trying to see if I could maybe apply fillets to those other edges as well but I couldn't do that again I'm trying to apply that chamfer even though I know it's not gonna work so I thought let me just settle with the fillet and it was fine it was fine there was no problems uh, I actually think the fillet worked out a lot better than the chamfer uh, for its purpose because this is a handle uh, I was trying to go for again ergonomic grip something that looks comfortable as well but also something that looks sturdy and again we are basing this off the GTA concept art uh, but I only have an image from one angle so over here we're kind of uh, improvising in terms of the shape of the handle and you can see over here I'm going to uh, mirror this to the other side because why would we give ourselves extra work and do what we just did to the other side when we can use the mirror function 
Now I want to make sure I just move this out to accommodate the blade region over there. And you can see that it's got really, really nice curves to it now. Uh, stuff like this can be done uh, pretty easy using the forms in Fusion 360. Uh, but I wanted to show you that this you can add really nice curves uh, to even sketches if you know where to uh, cut through uh, certain pieces of the model and where to apply those fillets. So it's just all about working smart and knowing when and where you should use your fillets and your chamfers. So you can see over there we've got a much better um, handle design. Right, so for the detailing, I can see that that bottom section definitely needs some chamfer applied to it as well uh, because it's just bare and it's really blocky. So again, these fillets and, chamf um, fillets and chamfers also gets rid of uh, the blockiness on your designs, unless that's something you're going for. Now you can see over here, again, exactly why I love Fusion 360. You can just blend seamlessly uh, between uh, these pieces of geometry. I really wish I could do this in other programs, but this is exactly why I use Fusion 360, is because of features like this. So you get those nice... Uh, seamlessly blending uh, uh, designs. Again, making sure I'm viewing it in shaded mode just to see a more accurate representation of all the fillets and chamfers. Bringing back the canvas and now we're going to be sketching uh, this open hole that you see over here on the machete. So I just use the center diameter circle and the sketch, really simple to do, just drawing out a circle, hiding my canvas, right click, click on OK and select that circle. Or you can see I select the edge and uh, I'm just moving it into position uh, that I'm happy with. I'm going to select that circle, right click, click on extrude and make a cut that goes all the way through. And I'll be selecting those edges and applying a chamfer to them as well. You'll see that. Okay, you have to play around with the values. It's probably going to be a really small value that I need to apply here. Uh, but that distance and angle, like I said, really comes in handy, guys. Uh, especially if you want more angle to your chamfer. Definitely play around with that feature and see how you can use it. I think I'm happy with that. Checking it in the shaded view. Going back to edges. Right, so turning back the canvas on, we're going to be adding these uh, these screws or these bolts over here. I always get confused with the terminology, but uh, I'm, sh I'm sure you guys know exactly what I'm referring to. So again, using the center diameter circle over here. On the concept, they have three, but you saw in the final image, I actually decided that I wanted to just go with two. Uh, I thought it looked a little bit better. So you can see I'm hiding, actually hiding all of the bodies just so I could get to my sketch over there. And then I'm going to just extrude these out, but I want to make sure that these are a uh, new body and it's symmetric. So it's going out on both sides. Again, I want to make sure it is a new body. You can see at first I thought, hmm, let me make a cut. But then I realized later, no, it's actually better to uh, actually extrude it out as a new body first. As you can see now, this is when I realized that uh, what I just did previously was not the best decision.
All right, so there you can see I went back and I realized let's just start over. I'm going to extrude these out and I'm going to make sure that they are new bodies and not cuts. So again, we're going to put on some metric and make sure that it's a new body. And then from here, when it's a new body, then I'll go to combine and cut this out from the handles. But uh, you'll see there's an option there to keep the tools as well. So you can make a cut and keep these tools that are in your scene. So you can see over here, I thought that these were out a little bit too much. So I tried to use press pull. That didn't work. So instead, I had to go back and use extrude in instead to make a cut. And I have to do the same for this side with that exact same value, which was... 0.5 I think yeah 0.5 millimeters so I think I'm happy with that and you can see I had the blade hidden this whole time as well so that uh, it just doesn't interfere with the blade because we've already done so much work to that blade we don't want to do anything unnecessary to it so again using the combine feature I'm going to cut these out from the handle but like I said earlier, I'm going to be keeping the tool. You see there's an option there to keep tools. Put it on cut and we're going to say keep tools. There we go. So we've made our cut and we still have that uh, geometry in place. And I'm going to do the same for this side. So I, am, I actually ended up doing double the amount of work here. I'm going against what I said earlier about using the mirror function. But I think it's fine. It's not too much extra work. And applying some fillets to these edges. Some really nice fillets over here to round this off. You can see over there, we can see our cut. And we, we've got these uh, screws or bolts that are inserted there as well. And it's really nice, a really nice uh, design aesthetic for the handle. I think over here, this is when I was analyzing the handle and I was just looking at it and I wasn't happy with that uh, that bolt or whatever in the center. So I decided that I was actually going to remove it later. But again, just going back to shaded, uh, analyzing everything, making sure I'm happy with the design. And there, you can see I went on the timeline and I've gone back to those circles I drew out and again, the power of Fusion 360, guys. I wish every program had this, but I can go back in time, adjust my circles, and everything we did, all those cuts, all of those fillets are going to be applied once we click on that stop sketch. So this timeline feature is incredibly powerful. It saves you so much time. Because uh, now I'm j I can just make uh, changes like this and not worry about having to cut them out again and apply fillets as it will be automatically applied once it's in its position. And yeah, I'm definitely going to be removing that center circle. You see, click on stop sketch and just like that guys, everything that was done before it was moved has been applied to the new position. It's amazing. The timeline feature in Fusion 360 is absolutely amazing. As right, so you can see over there guys, I removed that center uh, circle. And I just, I personally thought that this looked a lot better. And now I right clicked, went to appearance and um, I'm basically placing the materials on here as a... Uh, like a placeholder or the color IDs um, because uh, it actually comes in handy later on in Keyshot I'll know that the handle, I wanted my handle to be black uh, like a black plastic material or whatever and uh, yeah this is just setting up color IDs basically so again just putting that uh, aluminium metal on the blade and again some aluminium rough or what do I, I think I leave it I leave it on the previous material but anyway like I said 
it's just for setting up uh, different material IDs because uh, these actually carry through to Keyshot. Right, I'm using the project feature in uh, Fusion 360 with Sketch and this feature is also incredibly powerful. As you can see, I'm able to reference uh, the shape of this handle as a sketch. So it basically projects uh, that shape uh, onto a surface or a plane uh, as a sketch that you can now modify. And the reason why I'm doing this is because uh, there's that small like cut detail that you see on the handle and this is exactly how I created it. I used project, uh, extruded that out as a new body, separate shape. Again, that corner I thought was a bit too sharp, so I'm just using a, um, applying a fillet there. Alright, so now I can go back to, I can go and offset under sketch, off sketch, or off sketch uh, this new body, and you'll see I'm going to off sketch it twice just to create that thin line. So uh, that sketch feature really, really came in handy for completing this uh, particular uh, part of the design. And there we go. This is exactly what I wanted. It's a thin line, so I'm going to extrude this out as a new body. And I can get rid of that previous one that we created. So I go to remove. We've got our new body here. And basically, I'm going to make sure this intersects with the handle. And then I'll be going to combine and cut. And I'll put it on the other side as well, obviously, so that it's symmetrical. You can see over there, using the mirror function, referencing that plane, perfectly symmetrical. Now I can go to combine and cut this out. Now you can see I made a mistake of the, the keep tools are still selected. So I must actually make sure I go back and untick that because we don't want to keep the tools. We want to get rid of this now. And there we go. We got the nice cut line over there. That's what I was referring to. So that's how I created that. And just doing the same for this side as well. And there we go. And then um, actually the edges that were created from that cut are quite sharp. So you'll see I'm going to go back, select those edges. And then um, at first I try to apply a rule fillet. Uh, this didn't really work. So I actually had to go back and manually select the edges and then apply a fillet to it. And you would think that maybe you won't see this, maybe it won't make a big difference, but having these sharp edges just rounded off a little bit uh, does make a difference. And it's why I pay attention to even these smaller details like this, because they, they look really nice in the final renders. And over here, uh, it was trying to compute this process. It was a little bit complex. Uh, it actually made my computer hang a little bit, but it did complete the process. I think you'll see in the next shot uh, that the fillet's actually been applied. I was just encountering a little bit of uh, problems here. Not really a problem, but uh, it was just taking forever to compute. And I'm uh, obviously going to do the same to the other side. And again, I'm holding down control to select more than one edge. Uh, it's probably too late to be telling you that, guys, now. Uh, but um, if you've been using Fusion 360 for a while, you probably already know what I'm doing here. And again, just the whole computing process here was taking forever. So I actually decided to cut the video uh, a little bit short over here. But I did definitely ended up uh, being able to apply this fillet. It just took really long to compute. Okay, so for the next part, we're going to be adding that nice detail uh, to the handle here as well. So I'm going to be showing you how we can use another feature in Fusion 360, uh, which is pattern on path. 
So I'm going to my spline and I'm drawing a line that I'm going to be referencing. And I'm going to be referencing this line to repeat my pattern on this path. And again, I'm using the spline because, again, the spline uh, has these curves that it creates when you place these points. So this was ideal for what I was trying to achieve. And if you look at the handle, there's actually this detail on top of the handle, like uh, this grip detail that I added. Uh, and I didn't, I actually didn't add this detail on the bottom, uh, which probably wasn't the best desi uh, design uh, decision, as you would probably want grip to be all around. Uh, but I did add this on the top and it looked pretty nice. You can see just making sure that I'm happy with um, our spline line here that we will be referencing because our pattern is going to repeat on this line. I want to make sure that everything is lined up to my liking. And now I'm drawing out the shape and that I'm basically going to be cutting out of the handle here. So again, just using lines, it's going to be a simple rectangle and I'm going to use fillet to round off the corners. Holding down control to apply that fillet value to the other side as well. There we go. And now I can go ahead, cut this out of the handle. I'm probably going to want to hide that blade because again, we've already done enough work to the blade. We don't want it to interfere with that. And I'm going to make sure it's on symmetric as well so that we cut in on both sides of the handle. There we go. All right, so on the timeline, um, basically in order to repeat this pattern, we're going to select it on the timeline. So you'll see now, I'm just analyzing uh, my cut and I'm applying a fillet to this as well because I want the fillet to repeat. So the cut and the fillet is going to be repeated as a pattern on that line that we drew earlier. So you'll see it's a really powerful feature in Fusion 360. It's called Pattern on Path and you can uh, basically reference stuff in your timeline as uh, the thing that you want to be the pattern. So I'll go to create, pattern, pattern on path. Again on my timeline, see I'm selecting the cut and the fillet as my objects and the path as that line that we drew earlier. I'm dragging out this line and I can choose how many times you want it to repeat. It's currently, uh, the default is three. I put it on 20 and I drag it to a distance that I'm happy with. And then as soon as I click on OK, it's basically going to duplicate that uh, cut from earlier with the fillet. It's going to pattern it uh, on this particular region. And it just adds this really nice detail uh, to the handle. So again, depending on how many times you want to, to duplicate this, uh, the computing uh, process or the computing time is going to be depending on how many times you wanted to duplicate it. And I think I just repeated myself. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure you guys understand what I'm trying to say. There we go. So you can see it's like a gradual fade that goes up. And it just adds this really nice detail to the handle. And uh, it's using the pattern on path feature in Fusion 360. All right, guys, so in my previous video, I showed you how I actually cut out the shape, uh, but I actually adjusted the angle and the distance a little bit. So I'll just go to the sketch and show you what I changed over here uh, in case you want to do something similar. 
I've still got my guideline over here uh, that we referenced um, for our pattern on path and then you can see the shape over here uh, basically I just angled this a little bit differently and it's not as deep as it was before and uh, basically the result of this uh, gives me something that actually looks uh, pretty nice it's uh, basically like this gradual fade uh, so you've got this uh, deeper, these deeper cuts over here, and as you can see, the further it goes up, uh, the more shallow it gets, and it just creates this uh, nice faded uh, pattern effect. So I thought that looked pretty nice. Uh, now I wasn't sure if I wanted to do the same pattern on the bottom. Uh, actually, I probably should. Uh, I'm not sure because that's probably good for grip with your hands, uh, but I just wanted to show you the change uh, that I made uh, that I showed you previously. Uh, but yeah, let's continue. All right, congratulations guys. We have made it to the end of this tutorial now. I've showed you how to create this machete from start to finish. I've showed you uh, my approach for going ahead and even adjusting this handle just to give it some more aesthetically pleasing curves uh, and just showing you how you can actually just use sketching uh, to create uh, these pretty pretty nice looking handles uh, for whatever objects you'll be creating. Uh, I've showed you how powerful that drafting feature is in Fusion 364 creating uh, these really sharp blades like this and uh, yeah I actually had quite a lot of fun creating this uh, but for the next part I'm going to be taking this machete over to Keyshot just to texture it up a bit so I'll probably add some worn uh, metal on here I'm not so sure I'll do the handle I'm definitely going to be adding some blood onto this machete as well just to give it that really spooky uh, Halloween uh, look and feel to it uh, like maybe this is a machete that Jason Voorhees has been using. <laughs> so I'm just going to have a little bit of fun with the texturing. So if you've got Keyshot, uh, you'll be able to follow along as well. It's just my preferred uh, render engine that, I, that I'm going to be using for the next part. Uh, but as always, guys, thank you for watching the tutorial and sticking along um, for this long. At this point, you've uh, officially created this machete. And you, we use that uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 uh, image as our reference. And we basically use that to create all these uh, really nice shapes and curves to our machete. So, yeah, I'm ready. Let's head on to the next step and let's get this textured. Uh, but if this is where you guys are going to stop for the tutorial, then thank you for watching. And stay, stay tuned for some more tutorials. All right. Goodbye.